Well, hello, hello, my beautiful souls. How are you? I hope everyone had a nice holiday. Uh, we are almost finished with this book. It's uh, Spellbound After Midnight. Uh, my name is Simply Cindy. Uh, this is not my normal content, but I'm trying to make it some of my normal content. Uh, I'll be reading books here, uh, but this is not like an audio book where you just listen. I will do commentary. So, and bear with me because I have not read these books that I'm going to read with you, or this one is, this one specifically, uh, I, there's some books that are coming up that I've, that I've read, but as far as the fantasy, I probably haven't read it because I haven't read fantasy in forever. <laughs> so, uh, bear with me, there will be mess ups, there's not going to be any editing out or any of that. Uh, so, chapter 24, here we go. It was hard to speak around the throb in my throat. I closed my eyes to shut out his accusing stare, but I could still see it burning behind my eyelids. I know this looks bad. Answer the question. How long have you been working for August Ward? The table creaked with his weight. I opened my eyes to find him braced on his fist, his face an iron mask. Ooh, he's mad. <laughs> He's mad. Oh. Remember, she's gotten caught. So, and she didn't tell him the truth. This is what happens. Okay, back to the story. I don't work for Argus Ward. You're making a mistake, am I? His lips curled in a sneer. Then explain why, when I questioned his men, they claim you've been feeding him information about Iron Hazel. They're wrong. I'm not feeding him in for... Damn it, Tessa. He slammed his fist on the table. I trusted you. Do you have any idea the type of man Argus is? The kind of danger you've put yourself in. He tore open the folder and spread out its pages. A series of rugged faces stared back. All of them associates of Argus. Der Derek stabbed the top image with his finger. It was the mountain of... A man, Vivian, and I had approached on the... St it, it was the mountain of a man Vivian and I had approached on the street. Sorry. Do you think this is a game? Assault? Theft? Attempted murder? This criminal is getting in a cell after tonight's raid. He isn't fit to speak your name. And yet, he knows things about you that I don't. Oh, somebody's a little jealous. <laughs> A pained expression tightened his features. Derek exhaled and dropped his chin to his chest. Tell me why. I'm trying. Let me explain. I stood and paced the floor, struggling to find the right words. Oh, now she wants to find the right words. <laughs> she wasn't looking for them earlier. Oh. They all sounded inadequate in the face of his anger. I don't work for Argus. I owe him money. Lots of money. Self-loathing pulsed through my body. A feeling so familiar, it felt like coming home. Are you happy now? I screwed up. I always screw up. Don't I? The magic shop was failing, and Argus was a temporary solution that spiraled out of control. I needed to pay him back. I'm sure you, you of all people, know what happens when payments are missed. I was desperate. Ella had been murdered, and then you walked into my shop and charged me with fines. What was I supposed to do? I was sinking. I had to make impossible choices. Derek moved around the table and stalked me across the room. I backed up, weary of the severity of his eyes. If I thought my explanation would suit his ire, I was sorely mistaken. He'd been pushed too far. I wasn't certain he was capable of hearing my side of the story. All this time, and you never told me about your shop. Why? Let me guess. Argus wanted information about the murder, didn't he? And you were already in his back pocket. No, I mean, yes, he did approach me at Ella's memorial dinner, but that was the first time. I didn't know he had an interest in the case. I swear it. I never planned on helping him. It doesn't matter. A known criminal asked questions about my case. 
and you kept it a secret because you knew I'd discover your connection to him. You talk about choices? Were you kidnapped and forced to visit Argus tonight? Or did you choose to go? Ooh. <laughs> this is why it's important just to tell the truth. I know it's uncomfortable, but you gotta do it. <laughs> I decided my shoulders bumped the stone wall, preventing me from further retreat. Derek took advantage, tapping me in a cage of arms. Each one of I'm sorry, each one an iron beam on either side of my body. You choose to hide your involvement with Argus and your knowledge of the men who've been following you. I asked you point blank if you knew those men and you lied because you wouldn't understand. You never gave me a chance. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Okay, back to the book. A chance adrenaline pounded my ears. I shoved I shoved at the Im immovable sorry, I shoved at the immovable wall of his chest. Why should I? You charged into my magic shop one day sorry sorry. You charged into my magic shop on day one, determined to tear me down. You were like everyone else, judgmental to the core. You kicked me out of your office when I told you about Ella, I had to fight tooth and nail to get you to listen. And when you finally started to look at me like I mattered, how was I supposed to tell you what I'd done? You would have thrown me off the case. The muscles in his shoulders bunched as he pushed off the wall and turned his back to me. A wrenching silence followed. That would have ruined all our plans, wouldn't it? Sorry, that would have ruined all your plans, wouldn't it? My plans? Dread coiled in my stomach. I felt out of depth, unable to follow his train of thought. Were things so murky between us? Why are you here, Tessa? I, I, I don't understand what you mean. Why did you approach me and offer to help me with the case? Because I wanted to help Ella. No. He turned and wrapped his hands around my wrist, tugging me closer. The truth. It is the truth. I tilted my head back, confusion nodding my brow. She visited me as a ghost, and I wanted to make things right. So, you offered your services out of the goodness of your heart? How noble. My jaw clenched. I realized what he was getting at. One final nail in my coffin. Might as well hand him the hammer. Fine. You win. I needed the reward money to pay back Argus. What's wrong with that? Everyone doesn't fit in your precise little boxes, detective. You said my past didn't define me, and yet you've made up your mind about my character, and it's clear you don't believe me. Mm. I have to disagree with that. <laughs> She's just being... Oh, he's not defining. He's making judgment by the choices that you made. Uh, okay. Back. Back to the reading. Believe you, his head dipped, voice scraping against my ear. You've lied to me from the beginning. Did you think I wouldn't figure out that you used me for information? Maybe you didn't intend to feed it to Argus, but you had other motives. He lifted my chin with his fingers and held me there. Our stairs dueling. Ooh, yeah. That's uncomfortable. <laughs> what can I understand? I'm sorry. What I can't understand is why that wasn't enough for you. My heart pounded beneath his unflinching stare. What wasn't enough? Something snapped behind his eyes, like watching a dam break loose. The restrained longing he held in swept over me, dragging me under. This, Derek angled his head and captured my lips in a punishing kiss. Oh, good lord. <laughs> now is not the time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, back to it. I swayed backward at the force, but he banded his arm around my wrist and lifted me up to sit on the table. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> then rocked forward. His mouth landed over mine. Heat fired low in my belly. I locked my ankles around his waist. Oh, goodness. Locked my ankles around his waist and slid my palms up to his chest, feeling the smooth fabric of his shirt and warm silk beneath. Sorry, warm skin beneath. My fingers dug into his shoulder blades, drawing him closer. Turmoil emanated from his body. Yeah, I would say so. And I absorbed it. Let it sizzle through me like one of my spells gone horribly wrong. <laughs> His kiss was an act of ag aggression that quickly turned desperate, both of us fighting without words, and, like, trying to explain, asking why. Like, he's in the middle of a, a an interview. <laughs> That's not appropriate. <laughs> He made a noise deep in his throat and cradled my head in his hands. The ruthlessness burned away. Our kiss gentled. There was something about the way his anger melted that made me want to sob. It was easy to battle against his fury. I had enough of my own at the impossible situation my life had become. And I could erect a hundred walls, fight fire with fire. But the ease with which he robbed me of that ability made my head spin. Okay, that I have to agree with. I hate it when they get soft and you're like in the middle of the fight. <laughs> to me, it's almost like not playing fair. <sighs> okay, back to it. I wanted more. All of him. This was different. It felt diametric, reverent. Derek gazed his Sorry, Derek grazed his thumbs over my cheeks beneath. I'm so sorry. Hold on. Derek grazed his thumbs over my cheek. Breathe. I still can't get that right. I'm sorry. Derek grazed his thumbs over my cheeks. Breath shaky as his mouth pressed against the curve of my jaw. His tenderness didn't belong in this holding cell where only misery had come before it. My eyes squeezed shut. There had to be a way to make him understand. Derek, wait. Emotions thickened his voice. Was this part of your plan to get information from me? Collect the reward at all cost, even if you had to seduce the cold-hearted detective? Maybe you had the Gazette follow us that day by the apothecary. No, I... You know... You know what this case means to me. What it's done to my life. I lie awake at night, terrified I'll lose someone else. That I can't trust my instincts. Tess, Tessa, I can't even talk. Tessa, he said my name like a plea. I choked back a sob. Did you have to make me want you? The pads of his fingers skimmed my neck, and his mouth hovered near my ear. Make me need you make me fall in he stopped his throat working his air expanding in his lung how can you ask that i cupped his face horror compressing my heart i would never hurt you that way you might not trust me where you, where argus is concerned but trust that meeting you changed my life changed everything you're right everything has changed the mass return <sighs> That gets on my nerves. <laughs> it's like, you're in it. Just surrender and release. Say it all. The mess returned. His feature impassive. Wall firmly back in place. His near admission echoed in my ear as he removed my hand and backed away. I remained seated, numb. How had things become so twisted? Well, we know how. Derek reached for his jacket lying over the back of the chair and withdrew a leather satchel from his pocket. It landed with a heavy thunk against the table. What's that? Money. Enough to pay off your debt. Aww. I don't know if I would take it, though, because he's mad right now. And, yeah, I don't know if I could take it. I spread through, the, through my limbs and I slid off the table. This wasn't right. The bag mocked me. I hadn't earned the money. 
This was another example of someone swooping in to clean up my mistakes. I hated it. Yeah, I can agree with that. But we haven't caught the killer. The reward is unclaimed. It's not the official reward. It's my money. His tone was flat, as if he offered me a crust of bread, not a fortune. Yeah, I was thinking that too. My voice shook as a ball of anger wedged against my vocal cords. I don't want it. I don't care, Tessa. It's over. His mouth pressed into a firm line. I told you what would happen if you lied to me, and I meant it. You're off the case. Take the money and be done with it. Ooh, he's like me. When he says something, he means it. <laughs> I inhaled sharply, a bitter denial on my tongue. You don't have the authority to make that decision. The prince, the prince is being held at the castle on suspicion of murder. This is my call. He thrust the satchel into my hand. Take it. I won't have you indebted to that criminal. His tone lowered, becoming rough. No matter what happens between us, I need to know you'll be okay. I scoffed, wishing I could hide behind my own mask of indifference. You can't have it both ways. We're supposed to be partners. I thought we were more than that. I thought outrage cl clogged my throat. <clears> throat. I was such an idiot. Things weren't different. He turned me upside down with his acceptance and then decided I wasn't worth it after all. Fine. Toss me off the case. But you don't get to throw money at the pitiful witch so you can sleep at night. That's not what I mean. And you know it. Derek's eyes closed as if he were reigning in his patience. His jaw tightened. Tessa, I don't know how to trust you anymore. But I can't lose you either. If something happened to you because of him, I would never forgive myself. That's no longer your concern. Ooh. Now, that's a little real. <laughs> that's not right. <laughs> like, she doesn't have to hit below the belt. <sighs> okay, back to it. The hell it is! My fingers clenched around the bag. I wanted to throw it, smash it against the wall, make it disappear in a puff of smoke. It was absurd. I held the answer in my prayer uh, to my prayers in my hands, and it felt hollow. Realization came fast and filled me with certainty. I'd rather lose the shop than fail, Ella. I tipped the bags so coins fell from the opening, clinking as they hit the floor. They scattered around my feet, and I shook the bag until it was empty, then crumbled it in my fist. Until the killer is caught, the reward is up for grabs. When I find him... I'll be back to collect it. And, so you don't accuse me of withholding information again. The reason I visited Argus was because Jane Porter worked for him. Jane was investigating Iron Hazel, and whatever she found got her killed. One of your men picked up a ledger detailing her involvement. You can check with him to see if I'm telling the truth. In the end, it was my association with Argus that provided the clue. He never would have spoken with the agency. I stepped over the coins and walked towards the door. Derek grabbed my arm. Don't do this, Tessa. Am I free to go, or are you finally making good on your promise to arrest me? Ooh, dang. <laughs> the silence that followed had weight to it. It was a crushing force that made my bones ache. His eyes held mine, and I almost crumbled begged him to take me back, to trust him again, or to trust me again, to love me, fault and all. His gaze fell. You're free. Two simple words that pierced my heart. Oh, yeah, I can feel that. <laughs> he wasn't just dropping the charges. He was letting me go completely. Whew. I, square my, I squared my shoulder, determined he wouldn't see how much he'd wounded me. A witch never let anyone see her cry. Is that a thing? Good luck, detective. Maybe I'll see you at the finish line. I didn't wait for a response. I didn't even look back. Damn, they're both mad. <laughs> 
Okay, chapter 25. One week later. How about these? Vivian held up a set of decorative altar statues. Leave them. I'm pretty sure they're cursed. I added another scented pillar candle to a box and closed the lid. Vivian scrunched her nose and placed the statue into the stay pile. Uh, she moved on to a shelf of amethyst crystals. I can't believe you're packing the shop. Neither could I, though in some ways it felt cathartic. Wasn't it always supposed to end this way? I'd spent the week wallowing in my rejection from Derek while doing my best to track down Iron Hazel. Neither venture had been very productive. My only connection to Iron Hazel had been thwarted. When Charlie went missing after he stiffed a mystical weapons vendor. I guess I would have to run too if I had a price on my head. But without him, I didn't have any other leads. I don't have much choice. The month is almost up. What about the Gazette? Any luck with the ads? Derek wouldn't tell me if there was. For all I know, he's already found the source of the roses. I mean, obviously, solving the case is the most important outcome. I just wanted to get there first. For the reward, Vivian dumped the entire shelf of crystals into her satchel. I don't even know anymore. Sure, I want the money, but it all feels like failure at this point. If I save the shop, then what? I go back to mucking up illusions and selling mediocre po potions, I'll end up in the exact same situation as before. And do you miss him? Vivian sure knew how to salt a wound. <laughs> yeah, Vivian. Yeah, I miss Derek in a way I hadn't thought possible. And it was only an unhealthy dose of pride that kept me from crawling back to the agency. His silence hurt. I had expected him to forgive me, but I thought maybe it wouldn't have been so easy to let me go. Joke's on the witch. He severed ties and didn't look back. I bet he'd thrown a party. Oh, come on now. <laughs> she's going a little bit too far. Had it catered and everything. Yeah, she's going too far. <laughs> My eyes stung. I blinked away the tears. I couldn't let Vivian see them. Every time I got a little weepy, she threatened to send a ghost to the agency. Apparently, she had the perfect one that wa that wailed like a banshee all hours of the day. He'd never get any work done. It wasn't flattering, but I had considered it. <laughs> Derek had made his choice, though. And I'd made mine. And now, we had to live with it. I had a shop to sell and my dreams to crush. There wasn't time for petty revenge, said no witch ever, which just went to show how far I'd fallen. <laughs> yep, true. Vivian dusted a shelf of spell. At least, at least Vivian's helping her, right? Like, that's what I'm thinking. She's such a good friend. Vivian dusted a shelf of spell books and placed them into a box. You know, I was thinking, with the money you have left over from selling the shop and paying back Argus, you could purchase the old Derringer cottage. It's haunted, Viv. So what? You can get it for a steal. I might have already spoken with the ghost to up his haunting activities and scare away potential buyers. The price will come down even further. That's a good idea, actually. <laughs> That's me saying that, not them. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. Uh, or would I? <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not buying a haunted house. I wiped the candle wax from my hands onto my skirt. I'm thinking of, about traveling for a while. Maybe I'll start fresh somewhere else. Also known as running away. That's what Vivian said. Also known as self-preservation. I can't run into him. What happens the first time I do? And he's with somebody. I'll make a voodoo doll. You know I will. <laughs> Uh, I can't fault her for that. Vivian smirked. The poor thing won't know what hit her between the hauntings and the phantom pains. If Derek has any sense, he'll remain a bachelor. That's true. Very true. Are you listening, boys? I gave her a weak smile, and Vivian clapped her hands together. See? There's a smile. 
You're going to be all right. If you insist on traveling, maybe I'll go with you. Oh, that would be cool, actually. That's me saying that. The elemental islands are beautiful this time of year. It'll be two adventurous women taking the islands by storm. I'll find myself a wealthy land baron. And you'll cast a love spell over a handsome foreigner. And before you know it, Detective No Name will be a thing of the past. Yeah. Like, I'm sitting here reading this to you guys, and this is why I'm single. <laughs> I was like, yeah, let's go travel. <laughs> I forgot all about him for a second. <laughs> and now y'all know why I'm single. <laughs> no, that's not the only reason. Uh, if only it were that easy. I pushed aside the box and stood, stretching my aching muscles. The bell above the door jingled, and I looked over my shoulder at the newcomer. Sorry, we're close. I paused, recognizing Estelle, the agency's receptionist. Oh, wow. She glanced around the shop, her gaze taking in the stacked boxes and packed merchandise. Looks like I arrived just in time, Estelle shuffled inside, weaving around the disarray. I can't stay long. I'm on a lunch break. It will probably be my last one, thanks to you. <laughs> Apparently, lunch is a leisure activity. Her eyes rolled and grumbled under her breath. Estelle, what are you doing here? She, she waved a dismissive hand. Someone had to come and talk to some sense into somebody. Into you. I don't know how much longer I can keep my job. Mind you, I deal with a waiting room full of ruffians every day. And that's nothing compared to the surly monster detective chamber has become. He's unbearable. Officers hide when they see him, and it's your fault. Vivian cocked her head. I told you he'd been miserable without you. He'd be miserable without you, but you didn't believe me. She turned to Estelle. This one's miserable, too. It's hard to watch. Traitor, I hissed. <laughs> Vivian shrugged and opened a new box. Estelle planted her fist on her hips and shot me an accusing glare. I don't know what happened between the two of you, but something needs to give. I've never seen him like this before. He doesn't sleep, hardly eats, and he has this devastated look on his face every time I open his office door, and he realizes it's me and not you. Honestly, my feelings are hurt. Honestly, I'm worried about him. The ache in my chest tripled. Had he been having difficult time? I talked a big game, but I didn't want him in pain. It was the last thing I wanted. What do you expect me to do? Go talk to him. He needs you. And the adult has too much pride to admit it. I can't do that, Estelle. It's too hard. You don't understand. Estelle huffed. I understand perfectly. You're scared. Both of you are. You think it's easier to stay apart. But it's so much worse. I'm sorry. I can't go back. It's for the best. The tears returned. And I swiped them. I swiped at them with my finger. An ugly cry was in my future as soon as I had a minute alone. I was afraid you'd say that. Estelle crossed her arms and gave me her best look of motherly disapproval. She nailed it. <clears throat> I can't make you talk to him, but there is something I can do. I heard you're investigating the case on your own. And by the looks of things, the, rumors of <clears throat> excuse me, the rumor about you needing the reward money is true. I can give you a tip. Something even Derek doesn't know about. All I can hope for is that you solve the case first and stick around. Maybe, given enough time, the two of you can work out your differences. I chewed the corner of my lip. My interest peaked. You have a tip about the case? Yes. Someone came to the agency to speak to Detective Chambers, but he wasn't in. I collected the statement. I haven't shown it to him yet, and I'm giving it to you first. If Derek finds out, he'll fire you. Then you and I will both be looking for jobs. Vivian snapped her fingers. Tessa and I are going to travel to the Elements Islands. You could come. There's room for one more. Think of the damage three adventurous, adventurous ladies could do. 
She nodded. Not a bad idea. But first, follow up on the tip. See where it takes you. She pulled a sheet of paper from her bag and handed it over. I read the details. Are you sure about this? Estelle pursed her lips and pointed to the door. If I were you, I'd hurry. I knew I liked Estelle. <laughs> the alley was dark, and it grew darker the further I walked. Sunlight tried its best to reach the dirt-packed ground, but left only shadows. Oily puddles and debris lined both sides of the brick walls, but I weaved around them, pressing on until I found the right door. Estelle's tip said a shipment of illegal herbs had been delivered to this location. Oh, okay. The neighbors had heard strange noises and smells coming from a room on the third floor. It was only occupied during the night, and during the day remained empty. I glanced at what little sun found the way its way into the alley. There was a time to search before the owners returned. Maybe this was where Iron Hazel worked. There could be stores of belladonna root inside. As I climbed the rickety steps to the third floor, the withered boards creaked under my feet. If the room wasn't empty, whoever was inside would know I was coming. No way around that. An earthy herbal scent grew stronger as I approached the last door on the left of the hall. I paused in front of the portal and put my ear against the wood. Nothing. It was empty. I went inside, squinting in the dark. With the shades drawn, there was almost no light. Pushing the door softly until it clicked, I reached into the bag at my hip and closed my fist around two small stones, heating their smooth surface to make a beam of white light appear. Moonstones were a safer, brighter bet than a candle. When I opened my hand, the glow lit the room. It also lit an advancing figure. Fear constricted my throat a second before they barreled me into the wall. The moonstones landed on my feet. Strong hands clamped my wrist, dragged them over my head, and anchored them to the wall. Don't move, the voice commanded. I couldn't breathe. The force from hitting the wall had knocked all the air out of my chest. I wheezed, <clears throat> unable to drag a breath, to drag in a breath. While the face in front of me spun, black dots danced in my vision. Tessa, damn it! The man gripped loosened. The man's grip loosened. He caught me as I fell forward, lowering me to the floor as his hands cradled my face. Breathe, Tessa. Come on, just breathe. Air finally filled my lungs. I choked out his name. <coughs> Derek? How? He ignored my question, hands skimming over my body in search of injuries. Did I hurt you? Anywhere else? Answer me. I'm trying. <coughs> I croaked. Stop. I'm fine. His search ceased, but he kept pressuring on my shoulders when I tried to sit up. No, stay still until you catch your breath. I need a minute, too. I could have killed you. Don't be dramatic. You knocked the wind out of me. What are you doing here? Dirk's voice shook with barely contained anger, though something told me he was angrier at himself. As his fingers crossed Fingers ghosted over my jaw. My eyes closed. I missed those hands. He crushed. He cushioned his hands with his thigh. Sorry. He cushioned my head with his thigh. I got a tip. So did I. A sneaky feeling cold in my stomach. Did Estelle give it to you? Yeah. A witness left a statement. I groaned. That matchmaking she-devil. <laughs> Good for Estelle. She deserved to be fired, and she was definitely no longer invited to our girls' trip. She told me the same thing. Man, she's devious. She set us up. I'd be shocked if this was even a real tip. It wasn't. I already searched. The smell is tea leaves. Perfectly legal tea. <laughs> Good for her. Good for her. 
Had anything she said been true? Maybe it was all a lie, and Derek wasn't suffering in my absence. Oh, come on now. See, she just goes a little too far. Just a little too far. Stay in the magic, girl. Stay in the magic. I was such a fool. A lovesick, pitiful fool. Then I focused on his face. He was miserable. There was a bleakness in his expression that I'd never seen before. The need for sleep was ingrained around his eyes. He might have even lost a few pounds. And he'd had a workaholic and he'd had a workaholic won't stop for food attitude before we met. Seeing him like this should have made me feel better, but it only hurt worse, a million times worse. Unable to resist, I pressed my palm against his cheek. There you go. That's the way to do it. <laughs> That's me saying that. Derek released a slow breath. Aww, as if he'd been holding it all this time and could finally let go. That reminds me, ladies. If you ever find that love, that's what it's like. All of a sudden you just, like, release a breath that you didn't even realize you were holding. I hope each one of you gets that or has had that. You look tired. Okay, back to that. Back to the book, sorry. <laughs> you look tired, I said. His hands covered mine. The case is killing me. I know, me too. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. It's supposed to be hard. A tear slid down my cheek, which he caught with his thumb. Not like this. Tessa, some of the things I said to you. Sh I'm going to sell the shop, I cut in, unable to withstand any... <clears throat> mention of our previous fight. Rehashing it wouldn't do any good. What? No. I sat up and cleared the emotion from my throat. Don't get excited. I'm still trying to beat you. But just in case, I thought you should know. I never wanted that. I only wanted... He didn't finish. What will you do? Travel. I can't stay here. It's too difficult. I held his gaze. I should go somewhere where... They don't know about my unfortunate spells. Who knows? Maybe I'll get a few of them right this time. Don't go. His lips trembled. Why? Because people depend on you here. I laughed. No, they don't. They do. I know they do. Name one. What about Ben? The kid worships you. What will he get the medicine for his mother if you're not here? It's not like you give up. It's not like you to give up like this. <clears throat> I'm not giving up. I'm being practical. Something I should have been from the start. I stood and picked up the moonstones. They cast light around the sparse room. And sure enough, shelving units filled with tea canister lined the wall. Don't be ha too hard on Estelle. She was trying to help. Derek rose to his feet and st stepped closer. His familiar scent filled my senses. How long would I remember it? Would it become a visceral memory every time I smelled anything similar? How cruel. Listen up, detective. If you want to beat me, then get some sleep. Eat something. Give me a real challenge. Something to remember you by. And what about you? You don't have to remember me. <coughs> what if I want to? You have to give me something. A spell? I closed the distance between us. His hand circled my waist. No. Then how about an illusion? I wound my fingers around his neck, going up on my toes. My lips found his, and I kissed him slowly, thinking maybe it didn't have to end. But that was the thing about illusions. They didn't last. Derek let me lead, let me take my time. His mouth was warm against mine, lingering. It wasn't an urgent kiss. Maybe it should have been. It should have been a lot of things, but it was only going to be a memory. I pulled away and made for the door, taking the light with me. <coughs> My shop looked the same as it did when I left it. A mess. Boxes, some full, some waiting were stacked against the wall. Vivian had made a dent in the display of creams and powders, 
getting most of the them packed away, but she'd left the cabinet of oils for another day. I couldn't look at any of it anymore. It stank of giving up. Vivian was right. I was running away. I kicked one of the boxes and headed for the stairs. Something shattered beneath my feet. Looking down, I expected to see a broken bottle, but there was nothing there, which meant... My gaze flew to the hatch in the door to the hatch in the floor. Someone was in my basement. Slowly, I crept closer, trying to keep my feet from making a sound. I should get a weapon. Why had I picked the crystal spikes first? I had no idea which box they were in now. Maybe fire ant powder. I dashed to the face, and any intruder would wish they were dead. At the very least, they'd run screaming, fingers crawling at their skin. I skirted the hatch and searched the box of powders, finding the jar near the top. Off came the lid, while voices filtered up from the basement. There was more than one of them. My fingers clenched the jar. Any sane person would run and get help, but they might be gone by the time I got back. The plan? Toss the powder down the hole and ask questions later. I flung the trap door open. Tessa, is that you? Where do you keep the elderberry wine? Oh, that's good wine. I need to make some elderberry wine now. Think about that. <laughs> all of you have, all you have is blackberry. You know I can't stand the stuff. Sylvia popped her head into view and gestured with her cane. It's a disaster down here. I don't know how you find anything. Sylvia, why are you in my basement? She rolled her eyes. The wine, dear. Are you hard of hearing? Where is it? Found it, a man shouted. Who's down there with you? I set the jar on the floor and clambered down the steps, my shoes crunching over glass and a sticky substance. Mind the glass. I dropped a bottle. It's a bit slippery. Tessa, my love. Charlie held up a, a jug of wine and grinned. You're just in time. Your neighbor has cooked me the most amazing meal. She's a wonder. He held up the wine bottle. Does red go with fish? Elderberry wine goes with everything. Sylvia swung her cane, making Charlie do a little sidestep. I shook my head, unable to make sense of the scene. Charlie, where have you been? I've looked everywhere for you. Last I heard, you were in hiding. Charlie scrunched his nose. Never stiff a weapons vendor. When they get mad, they have weapons. I had to close up shop temporarily, of course. I'm getting back on my feet, thanks to this dove. He gestured to Sylvia. What? Sylvia flattened her lips with impatience. Charlie heard you were searching for him. I was minding my own business, looking out the window at your magic shop when I saw him. You weren't home, so I invited him over for breakfast. She makes the most wonderful breakfast, Charlie added. He's been staying with me ever since. Fuzzy adores him. And I adore Fuzzy. Hold on. I ran my hands through my hair, digging my fingers into my scalp. You've been next door the entire time? Charlie shrugged. I've been meaning to come by, love, but Sylvia has been such a gracious host. My patience ran out. Charlie, I've been to the market every day to this week. I'm at my wit's end. You're the only person I know who's heard of Iron Hazel. Tell me you have new information. Of course I do. That's why I came by. Sylvia grunted. The fish is getting cold. We should head back. <clears throat> Wait. I blocked the exit, holding my hands up. You can have all the wine you want, every last drop but not before you give me the details on Iron Hazel. You might as well tell her. There's no stopping her when she gets like this. We'll never get to eat, Sylvia said, gathering wine bottles into her arms. Charlie uncorked the bottle in his hands and took a deep sip straight from the jug. I know where you can find Iron Hazel. What is it? Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday, Sylvia confirmed. There's a ship docking on Thursday with a huge shipment of illegal contraband, and I heard Iron Hazel, Iron Hazel will be there. 
It might be your only chance to catch him. He slapped his stomach with the palm of his hand. All right, now let's eat. Sounds good. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're going to stop there. Uh, see you in a couple of days. If you guys are wanting to watch my videos on astrology and some mediumship, look for those videos. They're coming out as well uh, during this time that I'm releasing these books. So, love you, love you, love you. Talk to you later. Bye.